Welcome to the new generation construction vessel LTS 3000 engaged in heavy lift operation up to 3000 tons and pipe play operations with pipes from 6 inches to 60 inches in diameter and in water depth of 150 meters. The state of the art Derrick pipe play self propelled vessel LTS 3000 is rendering offshore installation and engineering solutions. The vessel is 161.53 meters long, 37.8 meters wide and 15 meters in depth. The main crane is an Amclyde model PC42 heavy crane with boom length 71.66 meters and hook capacity of 2722 metric tons. There are two deck cranes of 50 metric tons each with a boom length of 50 meters. Accommodating 290 personnel, the all-electrical ship has 10 levels of state-of-the-art, efficient design, tank top, freeboard deck, A deck, main deck, forecastle deck, B deck, C deck, navigation bridge deck, top deck, and heli deck. Keeping in line with the vision, company policy, security policy, safety and environment policy, drug and alcohol policy, and the training policy of the company, you will now undertake the HSE induction training program in this induction room, which is located in the navigation bridge deck. All your required official documents like your passport will be collected by the barge admin after the induction. For your own health concerns and that of your colleagues, kindly report all your allergies and medical conditions to the medic present after the induction. At the beginning of the induction, it is important for all of you to note that during your stay in the vessel, you will come across various signboards and notice boards. For the interest of your own safety and convenience, it is mandatory that you regularly check all signboards and notice boards. Kindly note, there are firefighting and emergency equipments in every level of the vessel. You must understand the five types of emergency alarms that are used in this ship. The fire alarm is an audio alarm with a repetitive single long tone. On hearing this alarm, all emergency response teams to muster at designated stations wearing coveralls and donning life jacket. All non-tasked personnel to wear coveralls, don life jackets and muster at their respective stations. The abandoned ship is a verbal master order passed upon which proceed in an orderly manner to your designated lifeboat or raft wearing coveralls and life jacket. Man overboard signal is an audio signal with three short rings. Throw the nearest life boy and immediately inform the safety officer on board, state man overboard and give location. Keep the casualty in sight, 
muster at emergency station and prepare rescue boat for launching. H2S gas release alarm is an audio alarm with a long ring and a short ring. Upon this alarm, the master decides to take the vessel away from H2S source. General emergency alarm signal is again an audio signal with seven short rings and one long ring. All personnel to don coveralls and life jackets and muster at designated stations. All clear signal is given as verbal information from the bridge. In case of emergency, you may contact the following officers as per the requirement by dialing 106 for LTS safety office, 197 for hospital office or 196 for medics room and 113 for barge admin office. Four lifeboats, each of capacity 90 persons, are located on the forecastle deck of the ship Two on the starboard side and two on port side. Each one of you will have a specific allotted lifeboat. The allotment of the lifeboat is based on the accommodation as shown in the diagram. Once you get your accommodation room, the escape route in case of emergency from the route to the allotted lifeboat will be marked at the door of your accommodation room. Kindly familiarize yourself with the escape route so that there is no confusion later during time of emergency. In case of emergency, irrespective of where you are, you have to gather at the muster location near your respective lifeboat. The escape routes, fixed firefighting equipments, general firefighting and emergency equipments for any kind of emergency can be seen here as blinking arrows and dots respectively for each level of the ship, namely Tank top Freeboard deck, A deck, Main deck, Forecastle deck, B deck. C deck Navigation bridge deck and heli deck Don the life jackets on reaching the muster location if you already have not Additional life jackets other than those available in accommodation quarters are available at the muster location. Go to your respective tea card board, take out your respective tea card from in condition, rotate it and place it back in its out condition. Then stand in your queue and await further instructions. Also note that there are additional life rafts in the ship for use in case of emergency. When all gets back to normal, before returning to workstations, remember to turn your tea card back to in condition. Emergency muster bills explaining the various responsibilities and duties of the emergency response team and other important relevant information are posted at various locations. It is again important to mention that the various signboards Notice boards and important information are displayed at various locations in the vessel. It is important for the personnel in their own interest to note them seriously. Personal protective equipment, better known as PPE, include company provided coveralls, safety boots, safety helmet, earplugs or earmuffs, safety goggles or glasses, and gloves.
in specific working conditions, respirators or dust filter masks and harness belt or fall protection gears may be required. It is absolutely mandatory for all personnel to have their PPEs at workplaces or any place outside the accommodation area. All personnel must be well equipped for proper donning and doffing of the harness belt. For donning, first check the belt and hold the belt in proper orientation. Next, put it through your neck and hands. Fit it to your body. Tie the hanging part around the thighs. Put the rope hooks in their designated sleeves. For doffing, First, remove the hooks. Untie the belt across the thighs. Remove the belt out of your body through the hands and neck. Pack it well for next use. Besides the harness belt or fall protection gear, it is also important to know the donning and doffing of life-saving jacket. Put the life-saving jacket around your neck and tie the belt for proper donning. While removing, first open the belt and take it out. In case of small localized fire, you are equipped to manage it yourself. As you have already noticed the location of portable firefighting equipments, when you face the situation of localized fire, you must get the nearest fire extinguisher. Based on the fire source and the nearest available extinguisher, you have to extinguish the fire using PASS pass method. Step 1. Pull the pin. Step 2. Aim at the base of the fire. Step 3. Squeeze the handle. Step 4. Sweep side by side. In any case of a fire, push the button of the nearest fire alarm call point to activate the fire alarm. If the fire is big or the extinguisher is not available at ease, Kindly use the fixed firefighting equipments. In the galley, foam-based fire suppression system is used. In case of fire in the engine room, use of FM200 fire suppression system is done. In both the cases of fire in the enclosed spaces, evacuate the place immediately as the fire suppression systems can be activated remotely from navigation deck control and are fatal in nature. It is extremely important to maintain good housekeeping standards all across the ship, including the accommodation areas. All walkways must be kept clear at all times. Different materials and equipments to be utilized for good housekeeping are stored at designated places. Kindly use them as and when necessary. As per company policy, it is also advised that all personnel should maintain high standards of personal hygiene. Smoking is considered as the most important source of fire hazards. Hence, you should smoke at designated smoking booths only. Possession and consumption of non-prescribed drugs and alcohol is strictly prohibited at company offices and on board the vessel. 
Suspected personnel may be subjected to drug and alcohol test by the company. All personnel are obliged to cooperate during such tests. All employees shall treat their colleagues with dignity and respect irrespective of caste, creed, gender, religion, region, nationality, appearance or any disability. Nobody shall use abusive or offensive language, tone or gesture with their colleagues. Superiors shall not insult or demean their subordinates. Considering what is permitted and what is not permitted to be discharged into the sea, garbage is distinctly divided into four types, namely non-recyclable plastics and plastics mixed with non-plastic garbage, rags, recyclable material, hazardous substance. It is important for you to note that receptacles with color codes are available at various locations in the ship and it is your responsibility to separate and put the garbage as per the color code. Red, plastics. Green, food waste. Blue, domestic waste. Gray, cooking oil. Yellow, operational waste. White, cargo residues. A hazardous substance is any solid, liquid or gas that can harm people, other living organisms, property or the environment. Hazardous substance shall be stored in a locked, well-ventilated room and in a suitable receptacle. Any door giving access to an area where a hazardous substance is stored has a danger sign installed. Respective Material Safety Data Sheet, better known as MSDS, shall be available at the storage area and shall provide information about how dangerous or hazardous the substance is. MSDS shall also be available with store, HSE officer and with the medical officer. Safety is the utmost concern in ship. Safety is not only a requirement but also an attitude. It is a behavioral pattern which a person must develop and possess. In order to develop a safe environment to work and a well-aware crew, LTS 3000 has an onboard behavior safety process and stop card system. You are advised to participate and contribute to the reporting systems. We suggest the following intervention steps to prevent unsafe acts and conditions. Observe activity around and work in progress. Stop unsafe acts and conditions. Act to intervene as follows. Approach and, if necessary, ease them. Explain the what's and why's. Ask the people about their job. Praise their safety acts. Ask about potential worst accidents. Question them about unsafe acts or conditions. Inquire about corrective actions. Get their commitment to work safely. Any employee or personnel has the right to stop any job or work if he finds any dangerous or hazardous condition which may affect the safety of any individual or machinery. This is done by showing the stop card. A report needs to be submitted to the HSE office or the superior officer. Work will resume only after the unsafe acts or conditions have been addressed. There is a specific checklist for BSP observation and stop card system. After filing the checklist, kindly submit it to the HSE officer. It is extremely important that any incident, near miss or accident be reported immediately to the supervisor. A near miss or dangerous occurrence may not look serious but has important consequences. Not only is safety essential but it is also important for you to understand the consequences of a mishap or accident. Proper reporting and relevant corrective actions can enhance safety standards and prevent economic loss. Any restricted workday or lost time injury LTI, is an economic loss for the company and also reflective of the safety standards within the company. It is therefore important to look at the incident triangle. 
if the near miss would have been a hit, the accident may have caused a first aid case or medical treatment case. In both cases, the employee would have to spend some time with the medic and get the treatment or the tests done, which would be counted as loss. Any serious injury might lead to restricted work day or days, leading to bigger loss of time and money. If the employee is restricted for a long time, he might be sent back, leading to greater loss. Incident of fatality is 6,000 work days lost directly, as per IS code. Transfer of personnel from the vessel to support vessel or boat and vice versa is actuated by basket which is transported by the crane from one location to the other. Personnel undergoing such transfer must wear the life jackets and carry minimal luggage. Personal baggage will be stashed in the central console which is meshed adequately. The personnel riding the basket must stand inside the basket facing inwards. When boarding the personnel basket, the passenger should have firm grips on the netting lines with an arm wrapped around through a square in the rope netting. There are a few locations on board the vessel where you need special permission to work. This is in order to identify hazardous work and prevent incidents or accidents. Risk assessment of task being undertaken needs to be properly discussed, done and documented. A job safety analysis is an incidence prevention tool that works by identifying hazards and eliminating or minimizing them before the job is performed. All personnel must use their JSA for job clarification and hazard awareness. There are 12 types of work permits. Each of these permits will have a section describing the purpose of the permit, the validity of the permit and the person who will authorize the permit. The following have 12 hour permits. Electrical maintenance work, enclosed space entry, Hot work, lockout, tag out, work aloft over the side, inspect repair condenser seawater system, underwater work, electrical maintenance in hazardous zone, pipeline maintenance, work on pressure vessel. While cold work is valid for 12 hour and small crafts coming alongside is valid for 24 hours. Electricity can also be the cause or source of an incident. Electrical appliances are to be switched off and insulated before starting a work on or near an electrical equipment to avoid electrical shock or any other hazard. Fill up the lockout, tagout and get the approval from the authorized personnel before starting the job. Thereafter, turn off the equipment, disconnect the circuits from the power source Lock out the energy sources, place a tag on each lock, test to make sure that instrument is locked out and tagged out. Toolbox stocks are organized at regular intervals including during shift change to discuss the tasks at hand, job safety analysis and permit to work application and any supporting permits or certificates. These discussions are made in the presence of personnel who will actually carry out the work and who will be directly exposed to the hazards. Toolbox stock details are recorded in the toolbox stock record forms. All cranes, forklifts and other lifting appliances are specialized jobs that require proper training and must be operated by designated personnel. Personnel who are authorized to operate cranes must know the 12 hand signals used for operating cranes. Swing, Stop, Dog everything, 
hoist lower use main hoist use whip line raise boom lower boom move slowly raise the boom and lower the load lower the boom and raise the load lifting gears are color coded this enables the personnel determine whether the particular piece of lifting gear has been inspected and approved for service over a predetermined period of time the color code system aboard LTS 3000 for lifting gears is blue, yellow and green which is changed every 6 months after proper inspection. Working above a height of 2 meters from the base level requires formal permission from OCS or the vessel master and is allowed only after wearing the fall protection gear. Any area where the noise level is above 85 decibel is designated as high noise area or ear protection zone and marked with signs posted at the entrance. All personnel must use company provided ear protectors while entering such zone. Wrong ergonomics are a major source of injuries and pain in the muscles and bones. Working in extreme conditions in the ship demands correct ergonomics for lifting of load and moving with them. First think before you lift about the possible correct posture. At the start of the lift, slightly bend your back, hip and knees. Assume a stable position. Keep the weight close to your body or waist and keep the posture straight. Avoid twisting or leaning sideways with the load. Put the load down and adjust if you feel necessary. Management of change is a systematic process of implementing the change and ensuring minimum hazard and covers all the changes in process, procedure, equipment, operating parameters and personnel related to the vessel and its scope of work. The classifications for MOC are based on process change, procedural change, change in operating parameters, Change in surface facility, bypass abort control, change in personnel, addition of new facility. MOC is exercised at different levels based on criteria. A typical condition in which more than one operation or work is done at the same location and at the same time simultaneously is termed as SIMOPS activities. It is very important to make a proper risk assessment in JSA for the jobs in SIMOPS matrix to ensure safety of all personnel on both the vessel and company property. Permits or PTWs are needed for all works under SIMOPS and needs to be countersigned by SIMOPS coordinator appointed by the OCS. All SIMOPS activity shall be undertaken under the supervision of the SIMOPS coordinator. This completes your HSE induction. Welcome to LTS 3000 and have a safe stay at the vessel. Remember the 14 golden rules of LTS 3000. Your responsible behavior will create an example for others and help us develop healthy, safe and environment-friendly working conditions aboard the ship.